one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day of life. We thank you for your blessings upon our lives, our community. Uh, we pray, God, today that you would be with those that are hurting, those in our community that are hurting today, those that are recovering from COVID. Uh, we pray that you continue uh, to help those that are sick um, and help them to recover, help the families that are affected. Uh, we pray for our community. We pray for our state. We pray for our country. And during a time of such great division and hurt and pain, we pray, God, that uh, people uh, will look to you uh, for peace and hope in this hour. And, Lord, that we will be part of the solution, not part of the problem. And, God, that we would uh, do our best to love each other. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus and everybody said. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Um, could we get a motion to approve the minutes of May 28th, please? So moved. I'll second. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. And the matter of approving payment to the Sida County Treasurer for USDA loan payment regarding sanitary engineer. Are there any questions or comments in regards to the loan payment? Um, for our sanitary engineer over there in the corner today. <laughs> Hearing none. I will make a motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. I'm sure that JP is very thankful for that, and I'd say the USDA even more so. <laughs> okay. In the matter of approving payment of the regular sketchup accounts for the various funds, moral obligations, and the Venom Mouse certificates in a total amount of $88,206.74. Any questions or comments in regards to the, the uh, docket this morning? Hearing none. Motion to approve. A second. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. And the matter request for appropriation of funds. Are there any questions or comments in regards to item four? Hearing none. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. In the matter of accepting miscellaneous reports. Questions or comments in regards to miscellaneous reports? Hearing none. Motion to accept. I'll second. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. In the matter of request for fund transfers. Questions or comments in regards to item six? Hearing none. Motion to approve. Second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. All right, that's it for a very brief meeting. Ms. Coleman, would you have anything in, in addition? I have nothing at this time. Mr. Crabtree. Nothing. All right. Uh, questions on items on the agenda, the press, uh, we have represented here today, uh, Bill, Bill Shope from the Soda Voice, as well as those that are online. Um, Bill, we'll start with you today. That'd be all right. Okay. All righty. Um, is there anything on the agenda? Item, item two. Item two. Item two, the payment on the sanitary engineer USDA loan, total $20,581.37. Those are loans are for different sewer lines that are done. Pardon me? Mark Ray Craft, Soda County Daily News. Okay. All right. That's it for now. Okay, items off the agenda. Okay, I have two. Uh, one, uh, with the peaceful protest that took place in uh, the city of Portsmouth this Sunday, I just wanted to know if you guys had any thoughts or anything that you'd like to say about the role that uh, the people that marched as well as local law enforcement played in making a, a safe and peaceful day. Sure. So I'm speaking for myself. I think uh, Portsmouth uh, should be very proud uh, of what occurred here. Um, I, I believe that the organizers uh, went out of their way to, to reach out to the police and, and others, uh, fire departments, others, um, to let them know exactly what their intentions were. Um, from what I can tell, it was it was well ran. I, I too watched it on social media. At the end, I I. Um, was wrapped up with church all day, but the uh, I would I would say that it was done very professionally. Um, I didn't see any agitators, um, not that I could tell, and I I think that um, um, 
it, it, was, it was a good thing. Um, unfortunately, uh, that's not what has happened all across our country. Uh, if anything, Portsmouth, uh, I, I heard also that Huntington had a very peaceful protest as well. Um, I, I think that is uh, the way to do it, practicing your constitutional right of assembly and, and to protest and, and, and address grievances and, and things like that. And, and I think that was done very well. I, I really do. I, I commend those that were responsible and, and they did a good job. Kathy, Mike. Well, I think the, the, everything was handled very well uh, over the weekend. And uh, I think as a, as a general rule, uh, this country has come a long way since the 50s and the, well, the 40s and 50s and 60s. And uh, for the most part, I think people are a lot more receptive of everyone than they were in those days. I mean, you're always going to have a few people that will always be against something. Uh, but I, I, I think, you know, the largest part of this country are over the discrimination and stuff that we've experienced back in the 60s. Uh, I remember back in the 60s when I was in the service uh, down in Fort Bragg, uh, North Carolina, the the Ku Klux Klan was very visible uh, in in some of those southern states. Uh, North Carolina, they had signs out and everything else. And uh, but uh, you know, the countries came a long way, and and most people are not uh, prejudicial against other races. I think we've all gotten above all that, but you're you're not going. It's never going to go away completely. You're always going to have a few bad apples and it's just the way it is. They're going to be against something and if it's not race, it's politics or it's something. And uh, so I, but I'm happy that we live in the times that we do because I've seen it when it was a much, much worse. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, some of the things that we've seen around the country, not only here, but around the country, the way some of the people have handled this situation uh, only goes to show that that uh, we we've, we've come a long way since the 60s. Do you think we're where we need to be? I I don't think we're where where we need to be, but I don't know that we'll ever be in, in a utopia. I don't think we'll ever be where you know where we really need to be. Because you're always going to have hate, you're going to have greed, and you're going to have a lot of the things that have caused those type of things and and uh, it's not acceptable. But you know, neither is drug overdoses and neither is suicides or murder or anything else of any, for any reason. But you're always gonna have some of that, it seems like, and I, I don't know if we ever will get in a position where we need to be, but no, we're not where we need to be yet. We, we, it needs to be much, much better, and I think it can be, but you know, it's gonna take a lot of effort from a lot of people. So, you know, I, about I the time you think everything like this is behind us, you know, something else terrible like what we've seen happen in the last few days is, is, is going to happen. And, and unfortunately, uh, you know, we got to just figure out how we're going to get beyond those things. I just see it as there's um, it was a horrible, horrific thing that happened. And but it just it just. Uh, it hurts my heart whenever I see um, opportunities like that, and the haters will um, make it all about, you know, bad police or bad uh, citizens that are being arrested for whatever, and it and it shouldn't be like that. And so I hope that this is a wake up call, and and perhaps even the police chiefs, the uh, sheriff departments, they can all get together uh, uh, with their their uh, offices and maybe review their with their officers the, the their the protocol for arrest and um, but so that it doesn't happen again but I saw uh, getting back to our uh, march here in Portsmouth I was reading all the quotes and a lady put Portsmouth pride is citywide and I just like to add Portsmouth pride is countywide right. so we're very proud of the 
march they held and the peaceful, uh, you know, um, it, it was just a good atmosphere and, 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 and it, it spoke volumes with what's going on around the world or around the country. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, we, we made a statement early on. I think it was last Thursday when, when this originally happened with uh, George Floyd. And, um, uh, there's no doubt, especially with the, the second autopsy results that came out as far as how he died. And, and um, this man was murdered. He was murdered. And, and outrage is, uh, um, we, we're all upset. We're all mad. that Police brutality of that kind in nature should never be condoned or allowed. Um, so, you know, we, we are praying for swift justice here. Um, you know, he's been arrested. Um, are there other, the others that were uh, involved there that, that could have stopped that? Um, my personal opinion is yes, there was. Um, but this will play out in the court system. It will. Justice, as I said the other day, never moves swiftly. Um, but. You know, in this case, he is behind bars, so he can't hurt someone, hopefully again. Um, but we're going to have to let this work its way through the court system. And in the meantime, um, I, I made the comment the other day that two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, there have been very many victims of this as a result of this uh, terrible thing that happened to Mr. Floyd. Um, but, you know, business owners of all races, uh, you know, and I, you know, I really hate to use the word race because we're all part of the human race, you know? We're all one blood and we all bleed the same. And, um, but we have, you know, we have different ethnicities and, and groups and, and it seems like if we could get past the, the point to where we stop labeling each other so much and we do in this, this, this society that we live in and we have to get past that hate and we, we need to trust um, God you know someone asked me and said what do you think the root of all this is and there's all kinds of rumors going around my goodness that you hear everything from George Soros to Antifa to all this hey look and I'll say it the root of it is sin <laughs> that's the root of it and that's the problem and we, we need to overcome that. Uh, we need to get past that. And, and unfortunately, and Mike said it, we've always had this uh, in our society, but it doesn't mean that we can't try to be better people all the time. We should always strive to be better as individuals. And this is a wake-up call. I think it's a wake-up call to a lot of people. Uh, I hate it that something like this has to happen, but I don't condone the outright flagrant rioting and damage to private property. And I will tell you this, I take great offense when I see World War II monuments being desecrated in Washington, D.C., the Lincoln Memorial being desecrated, a fire department and law enforcement memorials. These are men and women that have given their lives in the line of duty for those to be desecrated. Um, churches. Churches burned. Um, you know, and, and really through this time, churches are the ones that are going to help pick up the pieces from all this. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the first ones in line to help people. And, and there's just, it, it tells you there is a breakdown, a systemic breakdown in our society. And this has nothing to do with black, white, yellow. It, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, brown. It, it's not that. It, it, I, I'm seeing, you know, they're, they're asking about the thuggers out there. They're white. They're black, they're, they're, they're different. I mean, it, it, there is no distinction here. Uh, if you're looting, you're looting. That's all there is to it. And there's crime being committed. And unfortunately, we opened our jails up and sent out everybody from our jails and the criminals that were breaking and enterings and everything else before COVID, they're the ones out there breaking and entering right now. And, and that happened across the United States. So there's, there's, some, there's some issues here that we gotta address right now in our, our justice system. And we, we need to get the criminals off the street. I hate it that the protests have been hijacked in some way by individuals who don't care about George Floyd and they don't care about um, the 
you know, the need for us as a society to grow. They don't care about that stuff. They only care about themselves. They care about stealing. They care about burning. They care about anarchy. And those people are being discovered and they're being found out and they're being arrested. And we're going to have to, we're going to have to see a whole lot more of it because there's a bunch of them out there doing it. But I am, I will circle back, full circle here and say I'm very proud of this community because that has not happened here and we don't want it to happen here. We want to work with those that feel disenfranchised. We want to, we want to talk to those that are hurting and we need to move on. We need to meet, we need to move beyond this. And I know we can. Why? Because this, this town, this community is always, when knocked down, has always got back up. And we've been culturally diverse for many, many, many years. And we've made it work. But if there's things that we need to be doing to make it better, we need to do it. Let's do it. You know, I was looking, I was watching TV and I saw the masses of people that were doing these things, these horrible things. And, when you think about it, that they are just a small percentage. The majority of our country, of our mm -hmm. people, everyone is appalled at the at the behavior of the few. So, um, it, it it we just have to get it under control, just as you said. Okay. Is there anything else from the press this morning? Yeah, I've got just uh, like I said earlier, I had two. Uh, last week, Sheriff Brown's office announced that there was a five point five billion dollar award given to our right. county. Uh, I guess to go directly to Water One mm -hmm. for water filtration projects. How does that affect our county um, at this time? Well, I, I know that Water One had a lot of issues that they needed to take care of in their plant. I believe they got four million of that, didn't they? If if I'm not mistaken, I don't have the release in front of me, but. I no, there was there was a couple of smaller uh, um, amounts that were given. Um, oh golly, uh, I mean they they impact thousands and thousands of customers uh, from their Lucasville plant that wraps all the way around to Willersburg. So they it really affects a lot of people. Um, I forget what the other two they were smaller grants they were provided. I believe JP, am I right about that? About the number of grants that were provided through that USDA. But it was, it was welcome, and, but a small portion of that was grant. The majority of it was loan, which means they'll be able to spread those payments out uh, low interest for many, many, many years to help them run that plant because, you know, they are private. So it's going to help big time uh, with, uh, well, and, and, you know, the other thing, and we need to think about this, is the infrastructure. It's one thing to get water to people, but it's another thing to know that we're, we're getting new and improved infrastructure in the county, and water is critical. Especially in that development arch from Lucasville all the way to Haverhill, to have a strong water supply is essential. Um, you know, our economic development people are always harping on this, and, and rightfully so, that we need to do all that we can to, to keep our infrastructure upgraded and going. And, you know, what they were sitting on was uh, decades old, and it needed to be redone. So this is it's really good news uh, for the community. And I know there's other water in it, entities that are looking for similar loans need to need to do the same. So hopefully they'll be stepping up. Thank you very much. Is that it? Anything else? Okay. And then we'll get to our guest. Are you mm -hmm. gonna <laughs> No? <laughs> okay. Very good. <laughs> All right. uh, Mark Craycraft. The Scioto County Jail is still refusing to accept new arrests. There are 91 available beds. Why are they still operating on a catch and release basis? That's a question for our judges and our sheriff. Uh, I know they've been receiving because the numbers continue to go up, but I don't know the exact policy that they're following at this time. That's a, a question for our sheriff and for common pleas or municipal court judges. Mark Craycraft again. What are your thoughts on the Board of Children's Services? Do you think they are more effective and proactive? With new cases of severe child abuse coming to light, would you say they are operating at an acceptable level? Um, I, will, I will state what I have been told by board members themselves, and even the, the interim director. We're better, but we haven't arrived. We're, we're better, but we're not where we need to be. And they know that, and they're working really hard to get there. 
Um, you know, the board, there's been a major shift on the board, um, and there's more changes coming, and they are working hard to try to, um, to do better. I, I'm really excited about what Lowell started, and it looks like Vicki Evans, who's the interim director now, uh, what, what they have started is the outreach to the schools, getting the administrators, getting the, um, um, your guidance counselors involved, uh, having meetings with them, asking how they can be more proactive, what can they do, what are they seeing. They're doing a lot of tracking now. They're also doing, they're not screening out as many calls as what they were doing before, but the tracking is essential because what they're doing is when they get a call, where is it coming from, who's involved, there's a lot of statistics being traced now, so they can really start tracing. You know, where are where are our weaknesses? Where where are we failing? What could we do? What how could we be more proactive? I'm I'm uh, um, we're we're cautiously optimistic. Let's put it that way, um, and we'll see. They're not perfect yet, and I don't know if you'll ever get there. Uh, you're dealing with imperfect um, uh, imperfect situation. You're dealing with people that. Uh, sometimes they're in imperfect situations that are just impossible sometimes. Um, but the main thing is they're really focused on the kids. They've hired more caseworkers. They're active, as active as they can be with the COVID. You know, that really hampered them as well, Brian. I mean, it was um, going and doing those face-to-faces and things like that. They had, to, they had to retreat from that. You know, and then there was a major concern. We talked about it in here about... You know, is there child abuse happening because we're not seeing the face-to-face? Uh, we've had some reports of that, which saddens us greatly. Uh, COVID did more damage to our community than you can really put a price on. And um, the human price um, will go on for years. You know, it just, it's hard to really put a, a price tag on that. But we, uh, we're cautiously optimistic. And I know they're working hard. And, and I, and, there were, and my goodness, I mean, the, the number of meetings they're having, uh, the way they've involved state, job and family services, the, I mean, they, they've, they've really done their best to try to turn that ship around. And uh, there's, but there's more work to be done. And I'd like to commend the board too. You know, they're doing great, uh, yeah. great things, trying to get everything where it should be. So let's give them a... Yeah. And financially, you know, they're facing probably a downturn as well, which is a major concern with the 200, I think it was 210 million Medicaid cut. Um, we don't know where that's going to go. Um, that's a real concern. So we're going to have to, to watch that real close because we don't, um, you know, they could lose what they just gained. You know, they picked up an additional amount of money. Um, but what we're hearing is, is there's going to be cuts in Medicaid. That could include TANF. TANF dollars disappear. Uh, they could be right back where they were before on funding, which can affect caseworkers, things like that. We don't know yet. Uh, we, they have not been given a directive, but it is a major concern, something that's on our, our burner. We're watching it. Real, it's on the radar screen, and we're watching it real close because uh, I'd hate to see the progress being made there go backwards. And they, that board has made financial commitments that if they take a big uh, cut in funding, that's going to be that's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. Anything else? Uh, just one more here from Frank R. Thompson. Okay, yeah. Do you support Black Lives Matter? How sure are you about cultural diversity here? We still have major obstacles to overcome. The, the BLM movement as a whole, um, I'll be honest with you, I... I I see good and I see bad. I see, I see some that um, take it to a level that, that you know, to, to call just anybody and without even knowing the person, whether or not they're, you know, if they're a racist or not, I think it takes it too, takes it too far. Um, black lives do matter. They do. Um, just as white lives matter, and Asian lives matter, and, you know, they, they all matter. And I know that there's a stigma out there that says, well, no, it's, it's only Black Lives Matter. No, it, it's, it's all of us. We, we all matter. And, uh, but 
reason BLM is at the focus in the forefront right now is because of what's happened. And so, yeah, I mean, you support the, you, you support what they're saying. It, they do matter. Black, black lives matter. It, of course they matter. Um, as far as the culture, what was the question about cultural? How sure are you about cultural diversity here? I, I'm not exactly sure what he means by how sure I am of it. Um, we, I'm not exactly sure how to answer that question. We are culturally diverse, not as culturally diverse as other areas such as big cities. Um, our, our percentage of minorities in our area has always traditionally been low. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what he means by that in particular, but you know, one of the questions I've been asking, and I'll say it, I'll say, you know, is are we failing locally? I, I, and if we are, I want to know how we're failing. That's something that all of us as leaders should want to know. What are we doing wrong? And have that conversation. Um, it, it all begins with communication. We, we, we need to talk. And what may be perceived by one may be the totally opposite perceived by somebody else. So we need to talk about that, you know. And, and I understand where Frank's coming from. Um, you know, our, our area has had issues in the past. It has. We're not running from that. We're not hiding from that. That's the truth. We know about that past. But the question is, where are we right now? And where do we want to be as a community in the future? And I think that's what everybody's asking for. I really do. So I hope that. Do you have anything else? Uh, we have two minutes. Two minutes. There's okay. another one, but I know we have the bid opening. Do you want to try it or? Hmm? We have the bid opening. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Amy Clark Barnhart, it may be necessary for county students to remain home for the next school year, at least part time. Students will need high speed internet. Anything being done to reach those homes that currently don't have good internet? The only thing I can tell you right now is, is that internet access is privatized. Uh, you have Frontier, you have Time Warner, um, you have some other things that the county is not involved in. There are in initiatives being done at the state level right now to try to bring more uh, internet into rural communities. Um, I will tell you a lot of those initiatives in the past, I've said this in here before, a lot of those always go to the wayside and, and, and don't get done. I think from an economic development standpoint and from an education standpoint, uh, we really need that in Scioto County. 30% of our citizens do not, do not have access to um, internet uh, at, at the level they need to. So we still uh, have a major problem here as well as does Southeast Ohio. Um, so those are the, the, it's really a state initiative something that we support and have constantly been bringing up to our state leaders and federal leaders. We brought it up in Washington when we were there last time uh, to Sherrod Brown. Uh, we brought it up to him and said we, we need better internet access in Southern Ohio. Um, whenever you tell them that, um, you know, literally five miles from town, people don't have internet access and they're, they're just flabbergasted by that in Washington. And I'm like, don't be surprised. It's all over Southeast Ohio. And, and, and Eastern Kentucky, so. All right, anything else? All right, we gotta move ahead. Uh, we got a bid opening here. Come on up, JP. Just in time, too. Okay. All right. This is a bid opening for the Lucasville Lining Project, yes, right? Correct. Okay. JP, you want to get a little history about this real quick before we, we open these, people know what's going on? Uh, this is the existing uh, line that runs uh, to the sewer plant in Lucasville from the prison and it serves all the Lucasville area. It was put in in the late 60s, early 70s. It's uh, met its useful life. This is a project to reline the, the system and upgrade it for many years to come. Okay. And uh, along with that came our, we, we got the sewer plant for a dollar Yeah. and it's valued at 20 million? Is that it's what they came back with? Yeah. Right at 20 million, got it for a dollar. And we knew about the lining project yes, when they told us. It was one of the EPA issues that they had addressed and we, we said that's fine. 
but we negotiated a higher rate, flow rate into the deal uh, with the state of Ohio to help offset the cost of, the, of this. So. Yes. All right, let's do it. Our first bid is from Instaform Technologies, LLC, out of Chesterfield, Missouri. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the name of the company. Instaform Technologies, LLC. Where are they located? Chesterfield, Missouri. Oh, wow. Okay, it has a bid bond attached. Addendums one, two, and three have been acknowledged. The is this all one price? Yes, total base bid. What's well, unit prices, but the total bid is one million one hundred forty five thousand five hundred fifty dollars you plan on doing this this year yes second one is from inland waters pollution control incorporated out of detroit michigan Okay, the bid bond is attached. Addendums one, two, and three acknowledged. The base bid, one million two hundred fifty-seven thousand five hundred. Bond is attached. All three addendums have been recognized. The total bid is one million six hundred twenty nine thousand nine hundred seventy. Say Cleveland. Hilliard. Hilliard, Ohio. Okay. Okay, bond is attached. Okay, all three addendums recognized. Okay, the total base bid, one million seven hundred forty-two thousand two hundred five dollars. That is all the bids we received. That's all of them. Yes. That's all of them. Okay, I'll make a motion. We accept the bids and refer them to our side of the county sanitary engineer. A second. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. All right. Do you have anything else? Mr. I Dr. have nothing else. Ms. Coleman, can we get a motion to adjourn? Make the motion to adjourn. Second. Ms. Coleman. Aye. Mr. Crabtree. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.